Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. Today we're talking about one of the most advanced color management systems in the industry and why you should know how it works. Let's talk about ACES. So ACES has been a thing for quite some time already, but I still see a lot of people struggling with it and not wanting to understand what it does and how it works. So what is it all about? In short, ACES, the Academy Color Encoding System, is a color management system that has been developed for one single reason, being globally available in every software that is used in post-production. The main goal is to get consistent results across different platforms and make communication easier as everybody is seeing the same picture. If everybody used different color management systems, if at all, the results in every department vary a lot, which just makes everything more complicated. But using one global standard simplifies the color pipeline and allows everybody to know what the other people see. For that reason, the ACES community developed four color spaces. ACES 2065-1, ACES CG, ACES CC and ACES CCT. But actually, it's just two things that are important. The gamut and the transfer curve. And if you don't know what these terms mean, make sure to check out my videos about these topics. They are linked above and in the video description. So there are two gamuts. The first one is ACES AP0, a really big gamut that covers all the colors visible to the human eye. This one is used for data transfer and archival with a linear transfer function. And we call this combination ACES 2065-1. The second gamut is ACES AP1, which is a tiny bit smaller, but still covers the range of all the displays. It is slightly larger than REC 2020 and it is used for color processing. So we use this one in color grading and also in VFX. VFX usually nowadays work in a linear domain. And if you don't know what linear means, just check out the video linked above. So if we combine the AP1 gamut with a linear transfer function, we get ACES CG, and we know the CG from CGI. For color grading, we usually don't want to work in a linear domain all the time. We use a logarithmic color space, which is why we have ACES CC and ACES CCT. The only difference between the two is a little linear extension in the blacks of ACES CCT, which is called TOW, that's where the T is coming from. So what does that mean? If you watch my video on transfer functions, you already know that the log curves we use are not actually logarithmic curves, but semi-logarithmic curves. This means they are a combination of both a logarithmic function and a linear function for the low end. And there are many reasons for that, the most important one being that with this linear extension, we are able to store negative linear values that can be created by sensor noise and highly saturated colors. And if you have absolutely no idea of what I'm talking about here, go check out the videos linked in the video description. So to quickly recap, so far we have ACES 2065-1, which is AP0 linear, ACES CG, which is AP1 linear, and ACES CC and ACES CCT. They both use the AP1 gamut and almost the same transfer function. The color management journey of ACES works like this, and we're just gonna focus on ACES CCT and not ACES CC in this video. The footage gets converted from the source color space to ACES 2065-1, which is AP0 linear. Then the gamut gets converted to AP1, because gamut conversions always happen in a linear domain. Then we apply the CCT transfer function, so our color grading tools behave as expected. Then after the color grading, it converts back to AP1 linear, then the gamut conversion again to AP0, and then we apply the ODT with the RRT. ODT stands for Output Device Transform, essentially our display color space. So for example, REC 709 Gamma 2.4 or P3D65 Gamma 2.6. The RRT is the Reference Rendering Transform. It has been designed in a way to add a filmic contrast with soft shadows and quite strong highlights. And this one is the main reason a lot of people do not enjoy working with ACES. The contrast of this RRT has been just way too strong for many people, but sometimes it is exactly the right curve for the look of a show. And by the way, every color management system has its own look, because each RRT or tone mapping method, as it's sometimes called, is different. This is why we see a different result if we use the color space transform OFX or RCM compared to ACES or compared to a camera manufacturer's display conversion LUT. Even in RCM or with the CST OFX, we get different tone mapping methods to choose from. So each tone mapping method or reference rendering transform is just a creative interpretation of how the image should be rendered. 
For ACES, so far we only have this one method, one look, and if we want to modify it, we should do so with the grading tools inside our color grading workflow. Now, the other two things that are a bit special about ACES that some people may dislike are the unusual white point and the extremely flat transfer function. So, most color spaces use the same white point, which is D65. This just means that we define 6500 Kelvin, which is daylight, as pure white. And this is actually where the number is coming from for D65. And this white point has a certain coordinate in the CIE chromaticity diagram. The ACES white point, however, is different. And there are reasons for that that I'm not going over in this video, but you should know that it is a thing, and I put a reference to this topic in the video description if you want to find out more. And then the transfer function, as I said, is quite flat. This means that ACES is able to compress really high values into a reasonable working range, but it comes with the characteristic that slight adjustments with tools like the primary wheels quickly result in strong color tints. So if you use ACES, it is a good idea to change the sensitivity of your grading panel over here in the preferences. But both of these, the white point and the transfer function, are things that you can get used to. I know many incredibly talented colorists who work with ACES and are totally fine with its behavior. And sometimes ACES is also a requirement for certain productions. So for example for Netflix, it is recommended to use ACES. And if you want a video about how we set up ACES for Netflix, just let me know in the comments below. The incredibly powerful thing about ACES, as I said, is that it is implemented in every software that is used in post-production. So if you are a VFX artist and you're working with Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D, Houdini, Nuke, Fusion, whatever, they all support ACES, so you are able to use the same color management system like you do in Resolve. It's just supported in every software, which makes it incredibly powerful as a color management system for collaborative workflows. And if you want, we can talk about incorporating VFX into color grading in a future video. Just let me know in the comments down below. So hopefully this overview answered some of your questions about ACES and helped you understand the color management system a bit better. I personally do believe that having a global color management system shared across all the different departments helps everyone involved. But of course, I do also understand why people dislike the way ACES behaves during color grading. So let me know if you already used it, and I hope you will give it a go. But that's it for today. If you're new here, consider subscribing to not miss out on upcoming episodes. And until then, I will see you in the next video.